So, you've always wanted a rear-wheel drive Mitsubishi Magna? Well, you probably shouldn't because it doesn't work. Right, so we're in the interior of the brand new finished Magna and I couldn't be more stoked with how it turned out aside from a few major flaws. Speaking of flaw, look at that. You wouldn't even be able to know we've put a tunnel in this thing. So it just looks like a factory Magna, which is exactly what I wanted. All the gear shifter, all the everything. We've buttoned everything up to a point where I'm so stoked you wouldn't even know. So we'll go over the good We'll go over the bad and I'll explain why we may not be filming with this car for a while. First, we're going to start with the good. The engine mounting, good. Power steering, good. This car works like a factory car, which it's no surprises because that's what we we're planning on doing. This was supposed to be the factory version if Mitsubishi did this from the factory. That's why we used all Mitsubishi parts, tools and equipment. So aside from the little golf ball in there, it just works. The thermo fans work. It all plugs in. The engine works. Power steering works. Everything works as intended. The alternator's charging. It's like a working car, aside from when we go to try and drive it. All right, and now for our first major flaw, the starter motor. So I don't know why, for some reason, you hear that? If... So it's really slow. So I'm not sure why it does that for starters, but it's always done it, and it's always started. Now on to the next problem. So push the clutch in, put the car in gear. The handbrake's still up a little bit, but I don't think it's gonna stall. Oh no, I'm not pushing the clutch. Handbrake down, almost no movement from the car. Still in gear, still not pushing the clutch in. We'll go to second. Oh no, so there's something internally in this gearbox is wrong that's still trying to transfer power, which doesn't transfer it to the back. So that's issue number one. Now we'll get the car in the shop and we'll progress into issue number two as to why we did this wrong and how we can improve in the future. All right, so we're gonna demonstrate now the steering issues we're currently running into. So we can push the car forwards. So I'll push this car forwards now. And you see the steering itself it, it tracks okay, but as soon as we go back, uh-oh, so it'll automatically tow in the further back we go to a point where it just drags the front wheels. But if I come forwards again now, track straight. So underneath the car, the suspension itself is moving in, like not in tandem. So as we've mounted it, cut the subframe in half, they're just moving as they want to, unfortunately. Right guys, so hopefully that footage there of the car driving forwards and backwards gave you an indication just how bad the steering actually is on this car. Unfortunately, the wheel just does what it wants at this point. I haven't engineered it very well with my sketchy little tie rod end, so we're going to have to look, re-look at that and revisit it. But the big problem is no drive. So even though we tried to lock that transfer into high two-wheel drive, it looks like the best we could do is high four and unfortunately we've just burned the clutch packs out of this Pajero gearbox. The solution to that is probably going to be a two-wheel drive Triton setup, but we are only a small channel and funds, well, aren't immediate. So I would appreciate a comment down below, just hype me up for the Magna project because it could be a few weeks before I can afford to do all of this. I was just hoping that it would work. I was just hoping to get some content out for you guys, doing skids and having a fun time but it looks like that'll be an episode for a future day. So thank you very much for watching. Tell your mum to subscribe. I know she's been watching. And we'll see you on a future episode where we're out doing cool stuff in a magnet that finally works.